Hey, and welcome back. So a while ago, so recently, I got these spring clip terminal things in my mailbag video, and I just figured I'd run a couple tests on them before I get to use them. Now my goal was to put two of these side by side and have one be all positive, one be all negative, but the deal is, if you look here, they're just connected from one side to the other. I kind of feel like this thing has sort of a flat piece of metal and it's folded around and the sharp edge on this end, the one that you push down, um, grabs that wire and then you can't pull it out. So first things first, I'm probably going to check how this thing works and how hard it holds on to wires. So let me zoom you in to show you how the mechanism works. So I'm going to try my best to show you here and try to keep it in focus, but it's kind of hard. I've got a little screen. But if you look right in there, you'll see that this is kind of like a folded piece of metal. See that edge there? And then these kind of claws up here, when you push, it pushes down on that metal spring, sort of metal contact, which is a spring. And that allows you to feed a wire in here. Now it looks like the limit for the thickness of wire is determ determined by the size of the opening here. So I'm going to try to shove a couple of wires in there, different kinds of wires, and pull them and see if they spring out. Alright, let's do that. First things first, I'm going to start with, this is a plug I pulled out of a power supply that doesn't work anymore, computer power supply. So I see I've stripped the end here. I'm just going to give it a good twist. This feels like, I don't know, 16 gauge cable maybe. I'm going to shove that in one end here, probably put it in the middle. It goes in easily. Let's see how much force it takes to pull it out. Actually, not too bad, but it looks like I've pulled the spring out further than it should be. Let me zoom you in closer. So can you see that there? I don't know if I'm in focus, but it looks like that one is sticking out much further. If I come here, it looks like this end is in a bit more than it should be. Interesting. I wonder if I can pull that one out now. It does look like I'll be able to wedge something in there just That was close. I don't actually know what's holding this all together. I'm going to just try to pry it out. I don't mind wrecking one, especially to figure out what's going on inside. So that's that tab kind of lifted now. I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to grab a pair of pliers and try to pull it out the rest of the way. Well, couldn't find pliers in the nick of time, so just grabbing these side cutters should be the same same deal. Try to yank this out. There we go. Okay. Interesting bit of construction here. Let me zoom you in. Okay, so here's the contact inside there. So it is a spring. So this gets pushed down, and it's supposed to rest against the top of the housing. But then you have this kind of hole in the middle, which I suppose fits on a post. And you can kind of see that post in there. Which is interesting, because that means that the current handling capabilities is reduced. Because look at how small this section is. I may have something to measure this for you. Here come the calipers. So the overall width of this strip is about 5.2-ish millimeters. But that hole makes it so that the smallest section is 2.6 millimeters across 
so that will actually limit the current handling capabilities of this. I wish I had a load kicking around that I could put through this and see how hot it gets. I could short it though. Maybe we'll try that. So here's the operative plan. I have this power supply. It's the, um, I don't know if you can see that, Ming He D3806. It can put out uh, 38, up to 38 volts and up to 6 amps. So that's a lot. That's a lot of wattage. Um, I don't know if it can provide the whole thing. I'm kind of providing it through these little mm, dinky cables here. Pretty much this will stress test my entire rig, but we'll see. It's it's due for an upgrade anyways, so we'll figure it out together, I guess. But here's the operative plan. I'm going to supply this with as much water as I feel comfortable. Maybe we'll start with around 25 watts, and maybe then we'll go up if we can. I'm going to solder some wires onto here, onto that little metal plate. And then I'm going to run the some thick wires, right, the soldered thick wires, and short as possible into these terminals here. And we're going to check the temperature of this as the current passes through. This unit should be able to current limit, um, but the thing is I don't really want a current limit. I want a sort of wattage limit, so we'll see how that works. We may have to set the current limit to 6 amps and then slowly climb the voltage up to get the total wattage that we want, but yeah, let, let's give this a shot. I mean, we've got nothing to lose, so let's let's start. So first of all, I'll cut a length of this uh, pretty thick wire, and I'm going to solder it onto the ends here, and um, which I can bend back like this right now, and we're going to be able to see uh, how hot this gets with a thermocouple, so let's do that. So here we've got 14 gauge wire, and I think I mean, I think this should be enough. It's hard to say. I did crank up the temperature of my soldering iron up to uh, 400 degrees Celsius because I'm not sure how, yeah, how much heat this is going to pull away. Plus, this in my helping hands. But well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We're working on this together, right? So I'm going to clean my soldering iron tip, and I'm going to heat this up and see if this will take the heat. So the iron is definitely hot, but I need the metal to become hot. It's kind of funny that I have to heat this up in order to see how much heat it's going to take. It doesn't really look like it's sticking now, does it? It seems to be dissipating the heat as fast as I can put it in. It is alloying. I'm going to crank the heat up even higher. I'm at 440. This is kind of as high as I've ever been on the soldering iron. We will see. I may have, uh, may, maybe I should have roughed this up first, but we'll see here. I'm going to put it on there for a few seconds. It is alloying. Very little bit though. That's not actually soldering at all. It's just falling onto my mat and ruining it. Now what do we do? Well, I've got another plan, but it's not as good as this one. So here's what I think I'll do instead. We're going to take this block, now the, the middle pin is gone, so I'm going to put this in like this, in the helping hands, or maybe even sideways somehow, and then I'm just going to clip the wires in and then we'll see how hot it gets just with a, a, a short like that, right? So we're going to see if it's hot enough to even maybe melt the plastic, who knows. So I'm going to take that, I'm hoping, since we didn't get to the other tests I wanted to do, I'm hoping that this 14-gauge uh, wire will actually fit in here. Maybe first I should just pop it into my power supply here. So I'm going to put it like this. I'm 
Now I know I could be ruining my power supply uh, with a dead short like this, but I don't really have any other loads that would draw an insane amount of current to be able to sort of stress test these connectors. Let's see here. Because don't forget, like, I'm testing this to destruction, but destruction is not really the point. I'm not, uh, I'm not actually going to use these things for anything too critical. It's just to make quick connections. So let's see, is a 14 gauge wire fit in there? Oh, just barely fits in there. And I'm going to go the other end, make sure it's twisted like that. Okay, punch this down. Up it goes. Okay. So that looks like a fairly good test rig here. We should see if this gets hot, but in order to for it to be more visual, we should hook up a thermocouple. So I'll be right back. So this here is my thermocouple. And thermocouple is just basically a pretty precise way to accurately measure temperature. They usually have a higher range than a regular thermometer, and that's why people use them. So, if I set this to degrees Celsius, there we go, you see, 17 degrees. It's kind of awkward with my lighting situation here, but 17 degrees Celsius. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it on here. Now, to tape something hot, you need special tape. So I have Kapton tape. I'm just going to use a small piece of it. this. Kept on tape uh, doesn't burn. And that's why it's used in electronics a lot. So I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to put the probe there. And then I'm going to tape over it so it doesn't go flying anywhere. I don't know why it took me so long to finally order kept on tape. But anyways, that's a story for another day. There we go. Okay, so now my probe is uh, protected. If the plastic melts, then I'll have you know it it it'll, it won't uh, it won't damage the probe or any way. Uh, if this thing catches on fire, well, don't really have too much of a plan for that. I guess I do have some metal kicking around. Maybe I should get that ready. What's in here? So if the whole thing catches on fire, I have this storage box here with some 18650s. Just take the 18650s out and I'll have that to the side. So YouTube safety community, I got you. Okay, so that's there. I'm going to turn on my power supply. So this thing is being fed by 24 volts. Uh, so, you know, it's the wiring being so tiny is not that big of a problem. But if it does become a big problem, well, we'll deal with it. So, first of all, I want to see what we're set at. So if I shade this like this, you'll see 9 volts. And I'm going to see 1 amp is the, the max here. So I'm going to put it up probably about 5 amps maximum. This thing may have short circuit protection. So it may not actually work for this, but we'll give it a shot. Five amps. I'll set that. Set. I'm gonna drop the voltage down. Maybe. I don't know. A couple volts. Go five volts. Sure. Technically, this will be 25 watts. I'm not sure what this module is gonna do. I'm not sure if it'll feed it a dead short, but oh well. I'm gonna put my hands away. So right now it's at 20 degrees. Let's see what happens. So far, nothing. If I shield this, you'll see um, 0.24 volts, I believe. Yeah, 5 amps. Not sure how accurate that voltage measurement is, but here it goes. It's climbing up. It's, it is getting warmer. These wires getting warm? Nope. Terminals aren't getting warm either. Thirty-one degrees, thirty-two. 
It is climbing. But still, that's not that's not that bad. I mean, this rate of climb is pretty slow. I wonder if I put a load in there if it would make a big difference. I just don't have anything really. I'm going to let this go a few minutes and report back. Well, it's been a few minutes and it seems to have plateaued at 60 degrees. So, 61 degrees maybe. Right now it's 18.2 degrees in this room, so I think it'll be fine for 5 amps. Well, we can try moving it up to 6 amps, but probably with the same result, so let's give that a shot. I'm going to set the amperage, and the voltage doesn't really matter because it will always current limit. So there we go, there's their 6 amps. Temperature here. Yeah, I mean, it's just not doing anything. So basically, at the highest kind of amperages that I would use it in, it's probably fine. So let's take a look at what's going on here. We'll just unplug this, turn this off, and let's see the results. Grab my screwdriver, undo this, and this. These wires are warm to the touch, but not hot. These wires here should be about 60 degrees-ish. Yeah, actually, they're they're cold. Maybe this one, maybe that one. Oh, I heard the tape make noise, and I got scared because I thought it was an arc, but it's not. How could it be? Oh, this is cool to the touch. This metal here. Let's see if I can just shove the um, uh, shove this into degrees Celsius. I'm just gonna touch the metal in there. Yeah, it's cooled down pretty quick. So yeah, at five amps, everything's good to go. So pretty much five six amps, what I would use it for. I think these are a pass, but. Let's do a couple extra little tests and then we can move on. So we saw that the current handling capability was pretty good and we did see that it works on this 14 gauge wire and uh, the 16 gauge wire from the PC power supply which is over here in my pile of stuff beside my bench. So now let's try something at the other spectrum. Let's see if we can use this tiny little wire and have it also hold on. So this is Geez, I don't really know. 30. This is 30 gauge wire. This is tiny stuff. I can strip this stuff with my thumbnail. There we go. So let's put that in there and see if it works. Yeah, it grabs it. It doesn't grab it as securely as you would expect. There we go. So it does grab it, just not as well. So that's that. Do I have any other kinds of wires? Oh yeah, something else I might use it for is for these breadboard kind of jumper wires. Let's see if that'll hold it. Oh, there we go. I wasn't all the way in. Yep. Actually, this is kind of one of the most sturdy holds yet, so this is perfect. Let's see if I can just pop like an LED directly in there seems like you have to go in far enough to catch the hooks there. But yep, yeah, that works well. It takes a moderate amount of force to pull it out. Yep. So that's good. So yeah, I think these things are a win. They even have these mounting holes here for a 3mm bolt. That's a 3mm bolt here with the hex head. You can put that in there. So it doesn't actually clear the plastic. Let me just zoom you in. doesn't actually clear the plastic here but it looks like if you carved a little bit out because it doesn't matter right? if you look when you flex this the middle doesn't move so if you carve a little out you can actually bolt this on something pretty solidly and that's pretty nice so yeah overall 
I would say for the few cents each that they cost me, I'd say they're pretty good. I recommend you buy them. Thanks for watching.